everybody welcome to Sharon's home and garden channel so today I don't really have that much new to show you things are coming along really good um, I did get some lettuce harvested and I did get some transplanting done and um, besides that it's just a status check on my pepper seeds and what else we'll see how everything else is growing and getting along so I will see you right back here in 30 seconds. what's new in my indoor garden so as you can see down here I have harvested my lettuce and what I'm trying is I just cut everything off and we'll see because if you look at like this one here some of these inner leaves here will grow up so we'll see what happens that was the second cutting of that and you can see my microgreens here. These ones in the back are doing really well. And these ones on the front, these are alfalfa. No, red arrow radish. They are not doing very well at all. They're growing well, but they didn't germinate very well. So, and then I moved, remember those pepper seeds I was trying to start, um, I had them over here on the shelf on a heat mat. Well, I finally ended up getting a thermometer and it was 120 degrees on that heat mat. So I was basically cooking those pepper seeds. So what I decided to do, I put them on the shelf that's not solid and then I have this towel is folded in thirds and I have two of them so I have six layers of towel and then I have my seeds in here. Now these are all hot pepper seeds and hot pepper seeds take longer to germinate than sweet pepper seeds. So if you look at these and we're going to move over here into the light you can see that they are germinating. See, especially that one. See this little tail coming out. So they have been here for a week. And if I grab, let me grab another one here. So I'm gonna grab another one. You can see there, see these are germinated. I don't know what this is. This is lemon spice jalapenos. So I'm going to let those grow a couple more days and then I will plant them in dirt and put them under lights. So this little thermometer I got is an aquarium thermometer. And they, you know, they have a couple different kind of probe thermometers, but this one grab the other end here it's got an end that you would stick in your aquarium and I have it stuck now let me move this back under here so it's feeling what the seeds are feeling and then I only have one towel on top because if I put another towel on top it gets too warm so this is sticking right about 86 degrees, just a little higher than I would like. I would like it somewhere between 80 and 85, but they are still germinating, which is good. So that really has been able to tell me, you know, exactly what temperature this, these germinating mats are at. Yeah, um, I think if I would buy more heat mats, I would buy ones that you can set to a temperature. So then I want to show you 
You know how I said last week, be careful if you're putting something on a heat mat, make sure you check it every day. Well, this is what happens when you don't check it every day. I went for two days without checking it and these dried up and so I'm going to basically call all these beets. I don't even think that one's going to make it a total loss. I'm going to have to start over again because I forgot to check on them and that's what happened when you don't check on these when they are on heat mats. So the heat mats, especially if they're at a quite a warm temperature, really drain the moisture out of the soil. Now let's grab another one here. This is one of my onions. And these onions are doing very well in here. So, and that's on a heat mat in a domed little container. Now I've got some celery in there. That's still taking a while to germinate. These particular, you can't really see this. These are all the flowers. Some are germinating very well, some are not germinating very well. So whatever doesn't germinate will just not get planted. And I'll use the space for something else. So one big question I get asked is, how do I know when to water? And first of all, you can see here how the dirt is getting lighter. That means it's time for watering. And these are very dark. So if you lift these up, this is pretty heavy. I tell you, these just did not germinate very well. I think those seeds were old. So I'm going to put in water. And I put in about a quarter inch of water. And I let them sit here for about 20 minutes. Sometimes it doesn't take 20 minutes for that to soak up all the water. So if it soaks up all the water, I will put a little more water in and let it sit there until everything is dark brown. And once everything is dark brown, then I will take whatever's left in the bottom of the tray and pour it out. And then I put them back up on their heat mat. So here we are with the tomatoes and the cucumbers. Um, this particular tomato, and I don't know what the name of it is, is growing very healthy, very thick stem. I'm going to put my thumb there so you can see how thick the stem is. Very thick. I'm going to have to do a support to the ceiling and tie it up give it a final resting place so I don't move it and then tie it up because they're getting a little top heavy for those cups. This one doesn't have any flowers on it so we'll see what happens. Now the cucumbers have a ton of flowers and a ton of fruit but the fruit is just not getting bigger. So if you look at this fruit, now this plant is supposed to have all female flowers. And I'm going to have to do some research and find out if they all get ripe at the same time or if they all grow at the same time. They just don't seem to be getting any bigger. So I don't know what's going on with that. This tomato plant this is a Macy. Say hi, Macy. Um, does have flowers. No, your nose does not have flowers on it. <laughs> you can see them there. And um, so I come in here every day and I shake it. And to make sure. I don't know if they need help 
pollinating or not. So at least I'm getting a few flowers on this one, is, or these two anyway. So we'll see what happens here. One other thing I forgot to show you, I did transplant these garden berries and melon pear plants into three inch pots. So they are, seem pretty happy. Doing pretty well. I got six of each. That's what I kept. And so they, they have grown quite a bit since I have put them in here, especially the garden berries have grown quite a bit. So I've got friends I'm gonna give these to. I'll probably keep two of them and give the other four away if they all survive, that is. So these are doing great. So I have decided that I am going to pot up these ones because they're looking, this one I'm gonna just replant. But these are pak choy. And so I'm gonna pot them up and we'll get them going. So I've got this container and it's just happens to have four holes in it. First thing I want to do is put the top on and then I've got these net cups, three inch net cups. And I'm gonna fill the water until it comes to about there in the net cups just to the first, because I just want the water to be touching uh, the rock wool in here. So we're gonna fill this up, grab. There we go. So that was almost three gallons that I put in there. So now I'm going to put in the minerals, the hydroponic solution, and it's a teaspoon per gallon, but I'm going to put three teaspoons in. It can be a little stronger. I'm gonna mix this up because I have seen in some of the other ones that that red solution, which is what is it called? Flora micro kind of sits at the bottom. So I have this stick that I use to stir it up. All right. So I've got my grow it pebbles and I'm gonna take one of these. This is the hardest part is to get the pebbles in there without destroying your plant. Now I know that a lot of people soak these before they put them in. And I don't do that. It seems to work just fine without soaking them. The ones in the bottom sit in the water, they'll get wet. Let go. This rock wool makes me itchy. There you go. Look, I planted and there's no dirt under my fingernails. So that's it, that's all you have to do. Now I'm gonna take these and put them on the shelf under some light and they will continue to grow. Um, and to tell you the truth, they really don't drink that much water. 
That's one of the things I was concerned about is because I don't have a water source down here is am I going to be hauling water up and down the stairs and I'm really not. These are these containers are really serving me well so let's go put them in their final place here. So here they are all nice and happy in their little growing space. The light I have them under is an LED light and it does give off quite a bit of light so they should be doing well and before you know it they will look like that so that's pretty much it um, not a whole lot going on I'm kind of doing one of these numbers just itching to get outside um, the whole world outside is covered in ice right now we have about two three inches of ice in the backyard the garden still has snow on it you know probably a good six inches of snow last night we were supposed to get rain and it ended up sleeting and freezing ice and whatever so um, but this week we are supposed to get close to 50 and that will and it's supposed to rain and that will take a lot of the snow and ice and melt it so it'll be a muddy mess but I'm looking forward to when all this snow and ice is gone, then it can warm up because all the sun, the warmth from the sun isn't just reflecting off. So I'm kind of itching to get out into my greenhouse. I was in there the other day. I managed to break in because <laughs> the door had ice in front of it, so I chipped away. And um, it's pretty nice in there. Ground is actually not frozen. And the sun is hitting it now, so if it's a sunny day, it's really beautiful out there. So I'm really looking forward to getting out there and trying to grow some things under double cover. So that will be the next episode. So hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you right here on Sharon's Home and Garden Channel. And always remember, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.